I find that being outside and looking up at the trees helps me adjust my thoughts. Maybe it helps me feel like I'm enjoying the big world. Are you ready to live your best life, make healthy choices, have success, have fun, and still have time for everything else? I'm here to teach you how to do that, and we'll all learn together from guests along the way as well. Follow along for some powerful tips on cultivating gratitude, making healthy choices for mind and body, and having fun doing it. What if all the angst and worry actually don't help? Oh my goodness, let's keep learning how to do this differently. Hello, my friend. We are talking exercise today, and I predict that you are now either very excited about this topic or you are dreading it. You're wondering why you're listening. Well, hang in there with me because today just might surprise you. We are going to take a stroll back in time because I want you to get a sense for who I am related to exercise, and it's not a pretty picture. Maybe a good way to put it is that kickball in elementary school gym class was my nightmare. Nightmare. In fifth grade, I broke my finger while bouncing on a bed. Yes, mom, I know I wasn't supposed to jump on the bed. Sometimes we learn the hard way. And when I realized that having a splint on my finger would get me out of kickball for a while... It was like winning the lottery, a little pain, a lot of gain. Moving ahead every now and then in school, I would start to feel like I was doing something wrong because I played no sports whatsoever. I would consider trying out for something and realize that I really just didn't want to put in the effort to get good at that particular sport. I attended one day of volleyball tryouts in ninth grade and never went back. The most I can say about sport and exercise in my youth is that my sister was great at all of them, and I marched with the flag line and called it exercise. I love that, by the way. As an adult, I lucked out because my husband has always been focused on exercise and living in a healthy way. I used to say that I would probably be quite a bit heavier at any given point if he hadn't been such a good influence. So even though I liked doing resistance training a bit and we had a gym attendance habit on and off, I really never dove into anything. It was a reality check when our two kids were born and were younger. Suddenly I was a working mom with zero time or energy. I would say that's mainly the issue to exercise. Want to know what happened with a couple of years of that? I was not at my best. I had some bad habits. I ate the kid food, I'm doing air quotes, fairly regularly, and these things add up. I think we probably all have a moment that we remember as the catalyst to make a change. And for me, it was seeing a picture of myself with the kids at the beach. I saw a lot more of me than I actually thought was there. Now, there's also more to this story because I had dealt with eating issues in my 20s when I was in school, and even though I had a counselor who helped me through that, I was always nervous to fall back into that feeling. Let me pause here and say two things. One, if I'm brave enough to do it, I'll share that story with you on another episode. And two, if you're struggling with issues related to food and your mental health, please reach out to a professional for help. Whether you start with your doctor, a counselor, a health coach, or simply your parent or friend, ask for help. I am not a mental health professional and there are amazing resources out there for you. So I had an epiphany (laughs) that eating chicken nuggets and calling carting my kids around activities exercise was not doing me any favors, but I was absolutely not willing to do anything resembling a restrictive diet. And I was also not willing to count anything or weigh every day. I could tell by how my clothes fit, so can you. I could tell by my energy level or lack of, and by my mood, quite frankly. So I started looking around for something active I could do. I tried and I enjoyed spin class, home videos, taekwondo, jazzercise, boxing, not versus people versus a bag, and probably a few other things that I don't even remember. After a while, I would just stop going. Somehow there was always an excuse I could find about time or needing to commute there or the schedule not working or whatever. I even tried a summer running group with some friends one year. They were very into running and talked me into it. 
We trained to run a half marathon. I actually did make it to 11 miles with this group, and I was quite proud of myself. I'm not sure that our speed was fast enough to call it running. Quite honestly, we were the slow group. However, I enjoyed the company. So it was the company, not the running. And here we pause so that I can tell you that my idea of nirvana is to spend all day every day lying on a lounge chair or a couch reading a book. Fun beverages and snacks can be included on a regular basis. So where does this leave me and where does this leave you? I remembered that I had taken a walking class in college for my required PE credit. Yes, <laughs> yes, that is a real thing. Go Deeks, walking. Walking? Could it be that simple? Would it make a difference? Over time, I found some friends and neighbors who would walk with me. I found some bike trails that we enjoyed. And I finally created a habit that seemed potentially sustainable. When you walk regularly with friends, you get to know each other on such a deeper level than our day-to-day -day lives often allow us to. And that right there is a reason to try it. I don't know about you, but over the last few years in particular, I noticed that I have got to make more of an effort to connect with people on a regular basis. Our lives have changed. We're at home a lot more. And while we can connect online, that's not necessarily a conversation. And we all have a little fatigue about conversations online. So walking with friends, before I even get to all the other benefits that we're gonna talk about, just spending time with someone that you are speaking to about anything is powerful stuff. So that's number one. If you do this with people, it is good. So I challenge you, start walking regularly, daily if possible. I am not perfect at a daily walking habit, but I live in a place where I can walk to lots of things. So I ramp it up on the days I can and I walk to do my errands on the busy days. Let's talk about the evidence because this is all well and good. I'm telling you, you should walk with friends. You are either thinking that's a great idea or you are thinking, well, she can say that all she wants, but I do not have time, nor do I know people who wanna do this with me. And that's fine. But let's just talk about the evidence. Does walking really matter when it comes to your fitness level, your heart health, your clothing size, your muscle tone? Okay, I did some research. The Mayo Clinic says this, regular brisk walking can help you maintain a healthy weight and lose body fat, improve cardiovascular fitness, improve muscle endurance, and strengthen your bones and muscles. I started your list with those obvious ones first because I think we all would have guessed that. Absolutely, we understand that doing some type of activity can help us maintain a healthy weight. If we're doing some type of activity that might make us breathe a little harder, we understand that that helps with cardiovascular fitness. We understand certainly that it could help with leg muscle endurance. Now, strengthening my bones, I'm not sure I realized that one, but all of those seem straightforward to me as easy potential benefits that could come from walking. But here's what the Mayo Clinic also points out. Regular brisk walking can increase your overall energy levels, improve your mood, improve your cognition and memory, improve your balance and coordination, improve your sleep, strengthen your immune system, manage conditions like heart disease, stroke, high blood pressure, and type 2 diabetes, and reduce stress. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's a long list. I don't even know if I remember the first things that were on that list at this point. That is a long list. So let's dive into these a little bit further. I'm not sure I imagined that walking on a regular basis would actually increase my energy levels. I can see that it might help with sleep. Maybe I naively assume that if I get more tired during the day, I'll sleep better. That's not quite true, but it makes sense for walking. 
It's interesting that energy levels can improve if we move more. I think we could all use that. Everybody needs a bit more energy during the day. I'm also pretty fascinated with the potential for strengthening the immune system. Everything in our bodies is interconnected, probably even more so than we typically realize. What we eat and drink affects gut health, which affects the immune system. So why not walking? I can get on board with that benefit as well. Cognition and memory are also pretty interesting benefits. I'm in my 50s now, and whether you are in your 20s, your 40s, your 60s, your whatever, gradually, as we get older, and I always say, oh, I use the O word, I'm sorry to use the O word, but as we get older, we start to see some differences in our ability to remember little things. I don't know if this hits you too, but I am always saying, what's the word? What's the word? I can't think of the word for that thing that I'm trying to say that's on the tip of my tongue. So I am more and more on board with memory improvement tools every day. Okay, let's focus on mood improvement now. You know mindset is my thing. So simply the act of taking regular brisk walks can improve our mood? That's cool. Part of healthy living is gut health. So much of our hormones, digestion, and nutrition centers around a healthy gut. Every morning, I use a green gut glow drink to make sure that my brain, skin, nails, hair, and gut are at their best, and to make sure that I get more veggies than I would eat otherwise. I felt a difference for sure. Grab yours or have a look at www.bit.ly forward slash green gut glow plus, or just find it in the show notes. I'm guessing that some mood improvement can happen whether we're on a treadmill walking in one place or whether we're out and about walking in neighborhoods or hiking on trails. If you can get outside, however, you're going to get an even bigger mood boost. There's a lot of evidence out there to say that the more time we spend outside, the more happy and less anxious we tend to be. Here are a few more facts for you. Exposing ourselves to sunlight regularly, safely of course, increases the level of serotonin in our bodies. Serotonin is the body's natural mood stabilizer. Think of it as the happy hormone. It makes sense to me that so many of us struggle with SAD, seasonal affective disorder, in the winter. Now that I understand this, there simply isn't as much sunlight available during the winter to be exposed to. Walking outside, we're exposing ourselves to sunlight. Prevention Magazine says that walking outside has also been shown to lower rates of depression more effectively than walking indoors. There is something about being outside in nature, or even simply in your neighborhood, that is powerful. Again, let me pause here and say if you are dealing with feelings of anxiety and depression or anything mental health related, please talk to a professional. I also found some articles suggesting that people who take a break from work activities and walk outside have improved concentration, better focus, and more energy for the remainder of the day. It is worth it to get out of your chair. And I have a job that I do during the day, and I know that I need to get better about getting out of my chair a little bit more often. Now, if you listen to episode one of this podcast, you heard that thoughts and mindset are powerful and they affect the way that you, that I, that we show up in the world. I find that being outside and looking up at the trees helps me adjust my thoughts. Maybe it helps me feel like I'm enjoying the big world and there's beauty all around me. And I feel even a little silly saying that, but there is something about the trees and nature in general that absolutely can lift our vibration. I was talking with my husband about this episode and he pointed out something pretty interesting as well. He normally runs and lifts weights at the gym. He realized recently that running kept his heart rate high in the peak zone and weightlifting didn't really raise his heart rate in a significant way. 
understand I'm not saying there are no benefits to weightlifting. There are actually huge benefits and that topic is coming soon as well. He found that he was never doing any activity that put his heart rate into the fat burning zone. And if you have a Fitbit or an Apple Watch or whatever tracker you use that tracks your heart rate, you'll probably see this. And that felt like a miss. Why why was he never in that fat burning zone? I mean, I want my heart rate in the fat burning zone when I can get it there. I don't know about you. It sounds like a good thing. So it seems pretty efficient then to mix in walking amongst the other activities. Vary the activity, spend a little time in all the heart rate zones, makes sense to me, more efficient exercise. So he's a person who really does enjoy regular exercise. I'm a person who really doesn't enjoy regular exercise, but I really do enjoy a walk around the neighborhood. I live in an area, as I mentioned before, that's almost urban. I jokingly call it a baby city. We can walk to most stores and restaurants, yet we still have trees everywhere. So I get the sense of being in nature. I bet if you just put some comfortable shoes on and go out and walk down your street, you might enjoy it more than you think you would. On the topic of shoes, I have been known to do some of my daily walks in flats, So don't let your lack of fancy walking shoes stop you. It doesn't matter. Just try it. There have been times over the years when I could talk myself out of exercising for about a million and one reasons. It was often about what outfit was I going to wear, or I didn't want to fool around with putting my shoes on, or I felt it was chilly in the morning and it was too hard to get up. Or I got home from work and I was just way too tired. I did not want to change. Or, (laughs) and if you have curly hair, you'll understand this one. Or I just didn't want to have to wash my hair again. Curly hair, you got to be on a wash schedule. It does not happen every day. So I'm joking and I'm not joking. We come up with a lot of excuses. When we think about walking though, walking is probably the easiest exercise you can do and still get so many benefits. I mean, listen to this again. My gosh, so many benefits. I'm sure I haven't even touched on everything. You aren't straining your body. Your joints aren't being severely impacted and you have control over your speed, your effort, your distance, how often you do it. You have control. You can even take entertainment with you. I love to listen to podcasts while I walk. So whether podcasts like this one, of course, or music or audiobooks are your thing, have a listen while you move. Make it fun. My husband is learning that it's not necessarily true that the more you torture your body in the gym, the more benefits you get. And I'm learning that exercise can actually be fun and something I look forward to. That's a win, 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 win. (laughs) Now that you've heard this, my challenge to you is to grab some shoes and go for a walk. Ask a friend, ask a family member, a neighbor, a colleague in your office to go with you. Maybe make a regular time to meet and go. Start with up and down the street if that's all you can do. Obviously, start at your level of fitness because if we want to make it fun and enjoyable, the point is not to wear yourself out. The point is to create a habit that you can do regularly and you can enjoy. You don't have to race. You don't have to make it complicated. Just try it and enjoy it. And while you're out there in the world, smile at someone on the sidewalk as you go. Let me know how it goes. I sure hope you enjoyed today's episode. OMG, I would be so honored if you would take a moment, leave a rating and leave a review. Let's get this message out further into the world. Make sure you've subscribed as well and why not grab a screenshot and share it on your social media. Now it's time to head down to the show notes and see the resources I mentioned. Go find what you love.